As you may know, Linux 6.2 has incorporated Intel XE Alchemist support, which means that Intel Arc graphics cards will now work out of the box with many distributions. What does this mean for gaming on Linux on Arc? For years, gaming on Linux has been a bit of a challenge due to compatibility issues with certain hardware and drivers. So with the new support for Intel Arc graphics cards, can gamers now enjoy a smooth and seamless gaming experience on Linux without the need for any additional setup or configuration? Let's find out. Hey guys, it's CJ with Elevated Systems. If you're a Linux user and a gamer, the news that native Intel Arc support has been incorporated into Linux kernel 6.2 is definitely worth getting excited about, but what does it really mean? Well, since the launch of Intel Arc graphics cards, it's been possible to install and use them in Linux machines. It just required some extra work in the terminal, but now you don't need to do any of this because let's be honest all of this is the reason linux still has a market share of under three percent and why people who are less technical and try linux don't stick with it that's why although i've been a linux user since 96 my linux content is focused towards the less technical linux user or the person who's thinking about trying linux so for my fellow linux power users you're definitely welcome here but this is a beginner level video where I'll mostly just skim the surface of what this new support means for gaming on Linux and what games will and won't work out of the box with Intel Arc. First things first, the Intel Arc graphics cards I'll be testing is the A750 limited edition. The test system I'm using is the exact same one I used to test the A750 against comparably priced AMD and Nvidia cards a few weeks ago. It consists of an Intel 13400F, Cooled with a Deepcool AK400 air cooler, 32 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 memory, a one terabyte Gen 3 NVMe SSD on a B660 motherboard, and is powered by a 750 watt Corsair power supply. Everything is housed in a Fractal Meshify 2 mini case. Additionally, I tested two Linux distributions. On the Debian side, we have Pop OS 22.04, and for Arch Linux, I went with Garuda Linux. After installing Pop! OS and running a quick update, we see that it is using kernel version 6.2. Further inspection of the system information shows that we are running the open source Mesa driver version 22.3.5, which is the latest version available through the software repository. Version 23 has been released, but the installation method is a little too advanced for this video. Now, with something like Lutris, I could install and configure multiple game launchers, but I'll just be testing some Steam games today. After installing Steam and adding my library, if I click on the little penguin, you'll see all the games in my library that are natively Linux compatible. So let's start with a couple of cross-platform staples. Shadow of the Tomb Raider takes us time installing the prereqs and building Vulcan shaders, but the game launches successfully. I set the same resolution and graphic settings as I did in my Windows A750 review, and the game benchmark runs smoothly without issue. However, in the end, the 60 FPS average is significantly lower than the 93 FPS we got on the same system in Windows 11. However, in CSGO, the performance versus Windows is almost 40% better. Civ 6, another pretty solid Linux title, ran fine, although the graphics results were a bit under where I'd expect them for the A750. But I also found that just because a game is Linux compatible, it doesn't mean it'll work as Red Dead Redemption 2 kept crashing and was unable to complete the benchmark. There's also the fact that these are only a small part of my game library, but if I activate Steam Play and settings, now I have access to more of my library like Cyberpunk 2077, which works, but has this horrible strobing and runs like a slideshow with frame rates in the teens, as opposed to the upper 60s that I got in Windows. Switching to an older title by the same developer, here I get a choice to run The Witcher 3 in DX12 or DX11. Going with DX12, the game starts to work, but then freezes on the loading screen. Restarting in DX11, the game runs as we can get decent frame rates, but the game is not even remotely smooth with full on pauses in gameplay. This behavior is repeated in other games like Horizon Zero Dawn, which again was slideshow quality.
and God of War, which also suffered from extremely choppy gameplay. In Doom Eternal, although the frame rates were again much lower than the A750 is capable of, the gameplay was smooth, however in this title there was serious texture artifacting as you can see the glitter effect on many of the surfaces. But that these games even work is a big improvement over where we were just a couple of months ago, however not all games will work as we see here with Assassin's Creed Valhalla regardless of what compatibility layer we try, we get this message, and that's because although the drivers needed to make the Intel Arc graphics work have been mainlined into Linux, those drivers still don't include all the parts to make direct 3D version 12 games work with the Steam Play Proton compatibility options we have. So some games like Valhalla won't work at all, and others like Cyberpunk and Horizon Zero Dawn have significant issues and because there's a large and growing number of dx12 games this is the biggest problem that still exists with intel arc on linux and for now it seems like this might not be fixed until kernel 6.4 or even later before switching to garuda this is the part of the video where most creators insert their sponsor spot but i'm not going to waste your time with sponsored content that you don't care about. My channel is 100% independent and the only sponsors I have are y'all my awesome viewers. You guys are the reason that I'm able to keep making content that I'm actually passionate about. So if you appreciate the content that I'm putting out, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on the latest tech news and reviews. Okay, now I'm using Garuda Linux, the KDE Dragonized Gaming Edition, a bleeding edge arch based distro that comes preloaded with more Proton options, a more customized kernel, and the latest Mesa version 23 installed. Despite all of that, not much has improved. I did manage to get a couple of more games to work that wouldn't launch on Pop! OS, like Rocket League and Dota 2, but that was just due to the additional Proton versions I had available, which can also be installed in Pop! OS. Everything else was pretty much the same. I got identical performance in Tomb Raider and CSGO, but Doom actually crashed a few times when trying to change the resolution before it finally worked. Valhalla and Red Dead Redemption 2 failed, and all the rest ran just as poorly as they did in Pop! OS. Now, just for a sanity check, I swapped out the A750 for an AMD RX 6600, installed the AMD graphics drivers, and tried a few games, and not only was the performance better, still significantly under what we get in Windows, DirectX 12 games like Valhalla work. So I think you all can probably draw your own conclusions about the current state of Linux gaming with Intel Arc graphics, but before I get into my conclusions for the non-gamers, I did try a couple of non-gaming GPU-reliant applications. First, Blender does not have an open API compatibility out of the box, and therefore the A750 wasn't recognized by Blender. Unfortunately, even after installing the open API dependencies and setting permissions, Blender still didn't recognize the GPU. My research indicates that this won't be resolved in Blender for Linux until maybe later this year. The same was true for DaVinci Resolve Studio. This program won't even launch without a compatible GPU and the A750 doesn't seem to be one. I also repeated those trials on Garuda with the same negative results. Okay, now I have all the data for a final conclusion and I'll start by saying that despite my results over the past several days of testing, I'm impressed by how far Intel and Linux have come in incorporating the Alchemy architecture. It's been a year since Arc Graphics launched, but I always considered the A380 as a proof of concept by Intel and never a real contender as a gaming GPU. However, since the A750 and 770 launched about five months ago, Intel has continued to make improvements in both Windows and Linux performance. I attempted this video back in October when I first bought the A750, but there just wasn't enough content to fill a video only distro I could get the card to work on at all was Ubuntu, and that was after going through all of this and more. Even then, I could only get a few titles to even launch. Tomb Raiders, Civilization 6, and City Skylines, I think, was it, 
and the performance for each was well, trash. But now, those games and more, while still underperforming of what the card is capable of, are definitely playable, and Intel continues to improve its driver integration, so I believe the experience will continue to get better. However, in its current state, without support for most Direct3D12 games, Intel Arc is not the direction I would go for for gaming on Linux. For now, I'd stick with AMD cards, thanks in large part to the Steam Deck. AMD graphics is the focus of Linux gaming in both game development and compatibility layer development right now. There you have it guys, that's my take on Intel Arc graphics for Linux gaming, but now I want to hear from you, the early Arc adopting Linux gamers out there. Have you encountered any more issues than I brought up with Arc graphics? What games in the Linux catalog have you tried that just didn't work? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget the like button if you found this video helpful and if you want to stay up to date with my latest content be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. As always thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.